Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our WhatsApp chat. Uh, we're going to have a short discussion to act as stimulus uh, for our different kind of online event on the use of WhatsApp for teaching and learning. What's up in your WhatsApp? So I'm going to ask, I'm joined by Unity, who's from Bandura University in Zimbabwe. So Unity, if you'd share what's up in your WhatsApp. Thank you so much. Um, we use WhatsApp in a lot of different ways, especially when we are dealing with students from across the, the divide. Some are coming from very remote areas, some are coming from very well equipped areas. So all those students, when they like, after they have gotten their training, they go back to, to, to their workplaces, they still want to communicate, they still want to get support from each other, support from their lecturers. So WhatsApp has been such a wonderful tool. Without knowing it, everyone unconsciously has started using WhatsApp to support their day-to-day -day, uh, learning processes, teaching processes, giving feedback to students, and also receiving feedback from them without maybe just creating an official something, but it just starts the moment you give them your contact, they begin WhatsApping and you start talking about things online, things that, that they are experiencing, whether good or bad, and you continue to, to, to learn outside the classroom. That's how I've been using WhatsApp myself with uh, student teachers specifically. And it has worked wonders. They even form their own groups by each course and they, they, they work together. At times they invite you and they, they, they tell you we have a group. This is what we are doing. This is how we see this topic and so on. And you continue to interact with them using WhatsApp. Interesting. So they take their own initiative and then they invite yes. you. Yes. Okay. So most of the time they do. They have their course groups or they are, it can be the whole entire maybe cohort. They have a cohort group where maybe they use mainly for cohort um, announcements, notices and so on. If they feel there is something that's happening maybe at, at university level they need to share, they share across and then they have their specific course groups that they also create on their own and they invite you into them to give them guidance, give them feedback, or if they want to ask questions, they also ask questions. Oh, that's good. That's how they do it. But it has not been like an official tool that we adopted to say we are going to be using WhatsApp and this is how we are going to do it. At times you get into the group, they already have their group rules that you don't have to post this. This is specifically for this course. We have to respect each other and so on. They have their own group norms and the do's and don'ts that they have set for themselves. So when you get in, you read through, you just get, okay, this is this group, they behave like this, or they can say every Sunday we can share anything else that is outside, like the course that we think might help one or two people so we can share. So they have their specific rules that they have set for themselves in each of the groups. So they are more like formal, though in very informal in the sense that it's not like part of the course that has been designed by the instructor, but themselves they try to do it their own way. Mm -hmm. I must say I've had a similar situation with the postgrad educational technology students, mm -hmm. postgrad diploma. And their students actually wanted to create the group. I didn't say we're going to use this. Um, we have an LMS, so I don't see it as a replacement uh, of the LMS. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it's been very interesting and similar dynamic with, yes, it is an informal space, but they have formal ways of, of using it. So, for example, I will post um, announcements, reminders. Mm -hmm. At one point, um, I was marking essay drafts, and I saw that students were battling with one specific part and I made a short video of about you know a couple of minutes and I shared it on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that the students they also have a cohort based WhatsApp group but they also have a program based program. which is more um, kind of the the anything mm -hmm. you know that they, they have they're like okay well general sometimes fun stuff jokes just more community they post to that the larger program WhatsApp group and they keep the course WhatsApp group or things that are course specific. 
Um, so I, I think very often people think on you know, WhatsApp, it's an informal space or informal learning, but um, in practice, uh, there's different kinds. Or I think it's a, like a spectrum of informal. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one thing that I have also noticed when they're using the WhatsApp, uh, which they use a lot, they are able like to follow through the thread, then pick on the to topic that maybe is exciting them or someone's comment, then they respond specifically to that. And, you know, it goes on for several, maybe chats down the line discussing that one thing and they form those, you know, threads and at times they be, yeah, at times someone might maybe come in with a problem without even reading what others have said and gen then just posts in. Then along the way someone picks that someone's question has not been noticed by anybody. Then they pick that question, they pull it back, then they start discussing that and so on. So I find it like, although it's not that uh, formal, but they have their way of like interacting and trying to make sure that there's no moderator. If you look at how they do it, no moderation of like what is happening, except the rules that they've put. And, but they try to be like, responding to each issue as it comes when they see an issue has not been very well like answered and so on someone picks it up or the owner of that question might even bring it back to say i haven't uh, received a response what are you saying about this you haven't responded and then someone responds and so on at times you leave them go on and on you'll be following in the background wanting to see really how it's going. Sometimes they're talking about an assignment that you've given them and you are just part but behind the scenes. Then maybe when you see that, well, they are going maybe off or they are going too, too deep into it, you, you just want maybe a certain level, then you guide mm -hmm. them here and there. But I think it's, it's, it's quite a good tool and it's affordable to most of the people because it doesn't cost them much, so they prefer using that more than maybe using the official learning management system forums that are there, although they use them, but WhatsApp mm. seems to be more more convenient. They mm. feel they have access to it and they can express themselves in a way that they understand. And at times they even like mix the the language, mm. yeah, they try to mix and they give each other a lot of advice. No, you do this, I have done it this way the last time and it worked well or it didn't work for me and so on. So I find WhatsApp to be a very good tool that maybe if we are to take it and look at it as a tool that we can officially use, it might even bring better results, especially in terms of supporting our learners and also the collaborative learning processes mm -hmm. that they go through. Yeah. And even the sharing of documents, I've seen them sharing a lot of documents, like PDFs that they find maybe exciting, they post them, they discuss them, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's really interesting to note that they can create their own spaces and mm -hmm. start working with those spaces very independently of you know, whether you are there or you're not there, they feel, you know, mm -hmm. they are in charge and they can discuss issues and so on. Um, I said that resonates with me as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's nice to see students taking initiative. And sometimes I think the LMS is seen as official lecturer space. Yes. Um, whereas WhatsApp, there's a bit more freedom and they have a bit more, uh, more, more voice. Um, yeah, but we're very interested to see what kind of practices you've developed with your students, perhaps you're using WhatsApp for your own learning as well um, and, and professional development. Um, even at conferences I've seen people rather than tweeting, they have WhatsApp groups for their colleagues um, back home mm -hmm. and they're sharing insights from the conference, photos. Um, that's very interesting because when we choose to communicate on WhatsApp for various purposes, it's often uh, for, for a reason, um, so, mm -hmm. and it's not like open scholarship or open in, you know, it's sort of more closed, it's limited to the, so there's that 
meet, or I think maybe like a sort of private space. Um, maybe, you know, that students feel, and, and even ourselves perhaps, comfortable in a different way. Um, yeah, but I think each, each course and each context has probably got their own, you know, you develop your own practices. And we're keen to hear from you, how are you using WhatsApp mm -hmm. for teaching and learning in your context? Um, what are the, some of the, the needs you see it being addressed? So, for example, with, with our students, it's actually, we sort of point them to the LMS and Google Drive, whatever, but sometimes where they are, they access, they don't have such good access. Mm -hmm. So WhatsApp is sometimes the, the most accessible. Mm -hmm. Not sure if it's like that in, in, in your context, perhaps. Yes. Um, and yeah, some of the, if you were perhaps um, giving people tips who are using WhatsApp for teaching and learning for the first time, what would you tell them? Um, maybe you've noticed some things that work particularly well. Um, yeah, so we invite you to share your stories with us, yes. and we're keen to learn what's up in your WhatsApp. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we look forward to chatting to you. Bye Thank for you. now. Bye.